Welcome back, my little time travelers, to What to Watch Now, where we talk about what's streaming on Netflix right now. And today we are talking about Spike Lee's newest project that he produced, See You Yesterday. I am very all about the Spike Lee projects nowadays. Um, the show he put out uh, last year, She's Gotta Have It, it's the the season two is happening this month, which I'm so excited about. So when I heard he was producing this, I was like, okay, I'm on board. I love what he does. So I'm going to give you a quickie synopsis first before we go into anything. Best friends CJ and Sebastian build a pair of time machines and use them in order to save the life of CJ's brother. I, right from the trailer get-go, was into it. Um, the characters seemed cute and likable. I loved that we were kind of going about time traveling in a different way. And then it all kind of like hit me and like clicked in my head when, um, okay, so basically CJ and Sebastian go to a clearly, they say that these kids are specifically prodigies, but clearly everyone at the school is next level intelligent. And they go to the Bronx School of Science or something along the lines of that. And their teacher is motherfucking Michael J. Fox. Michael fucking J. Fox. And he even says, great Scott. And then it hit me. Is this kind of like a weird new homage to Back to the Future? Because I'm down with that. I mean, I love Back to the Future. That's one of those like kind of classics. Um, the whole trilogy is just really fun to watch, really rewatchable. And um, I'm down with a modern take. And I'm, I'm not completely against it kind of being a little more political, but we're going to get into the whole discussion of that in a moment. Um, just wanted to take a quick reminder that uh, please feel free to subscribe and consider becoming a Patreon supporter today. Either way, I love doing this podcast and I just want it to grow. And things like that really help out. Uh, also, let me know what you think about this movie. I'm genuinely curious to hear what other people think about this. So... Essentially what happens is CJ is a smart girl with her best friend Sebastian, um, but they live in maybe not the best neighborhood, and they are getting into time traveling, and they're doing what nobody else has done before, and unfortunately, through a series of events, her brother gets accidentally mistaken with some people that recently robbed a bodega, and through the hostility from the police and the mix-up and everything like that, he gets unfairly shot and killed. So then that becomes her motivation to suddenly make the time-traveling time machine work, and suddenly it works this time. But then we start to see the consequences of, you know, messing with time, which even leads to Sebastian, her best friend's death, and then she's got to fix everything. But... There's a lot of, like, I felt very, I gotta be honest with you, this movie left me, I wasn't most satisfied with the ending, I guess is the best way I can kind of sum it up and put it together. So, I love the characters. I love their backgrounds, I love their personalities, they seem to click well together, and I'm actually okay with the general, like, kind of corny CGI of the time traveling and the cute humor. A lot of the dynamics going on are positive, so I'll start with all the positives. I love that, you know, she's just your run-of-the-mill kid, except she's, like, a fucking genius, and she's got an overprotective brother who seems like he's... It's kind of like the subtle things in the movie that kind of stand out. So, like, he's wearing a uniform, so, uh, like, like a everyday, like... Like, I don't know, like a delivery or Pizza Hut type uniform where he's choosing to make the right choice and not sell drugs or do anything negative that maybe his peers will, would be kind of caught up in doing. Um, just because I think that's the insinuation they're making that he's making the right choice, even if it's the harder choice. I think that's just generally a reflection of like her goal, like what she needs to do in the movie. It's kind of like a little subtle point to her as well. But he's great. He wants to help her. And, and you know, I love her dynamic with him. She's like, why can't you come with me? Why don't you get your shit together too? And he even considers it. He's like, you know, you're right. Maybe I should go back to school. Maybe we can both succeed together. Because it's like, yeah, you don't have to self-sacrifice yourself to also do well as well. I'm sure um, our mom also wants both of us to succeed. She seems like she comes from a kind of a strictish background a little bit, but nonetheless a very loving mom. Unfortunately, her father's dead. And then we have Sebastian. He also has lost his parents. So th these kids have seen or experienced uh, pretty heavy layers of loss and uh, tragedy in some way. 
And uh, I could, I wonder if subconsciously there is that interest to change things. I don't think before her brother died, she was going to turn back time and save her dad. But maybe that's a little implant in them that made them particularly excited about the subject of time travel. It's just, again, it's the subtle things in the background. Again, Sebastian has hilarious, loving uh, grandparents. They're a little too into his business. And I love when the grandma gets mad. She's like, they're making me old. You're making me old. I'm getting older by the minute by you guys. So really cute and funny. And I gotta tell you, was pretty upset with how it worked out with Eduardo and uh, CJ. Eduardo is someone who's interested in her. He's a little bit too much talk, a little bit too in his on her face. But she, he's also very brilliant. And she even has like a cute moment where she walks in and he has like a, an overweight kind of maybe house uh, bedridden type uh, mother or auntie or something in some way and she just needs some assistance and uh, he just lovingly is taking care of her feet because remember if you're I don't know if she's suffering from something medical or just being overweight probably uh, put some strain on her feet in some way he lovingly is making her life better and rubbing her feet and getting her the remote and it's this nice little sweet moment that she pulls away from and we see that CJ has respect for people's personal business and one not wanting to be in it but also kind of had a moment of seeing a, like a deeper sense of Eduardo so these little treasures I'm telling you about are wonderful. It's great to see someone smart, uh, especially a female, um, and it's so great to see a friendship that doesn't build into anything romantic. They just truly are friends. They even talk about the idea that family is what you choose. Um, er, the family, friends are a family you choose kind of concept, which is a beautiful idea. So we got a family for CJ, her brother, someone important to her. I would say even more important to her than even her parents. Then we have, on the other hand, we have Sebastian, who's the family she chooses. And she's very close with him. She's open about everything. They work together and he has her back and vice versa. But everything kind of gets fucked up when they got they start getting into time travel, which I appreciate they talk about the repercussions of time travel. I mean, now, but this is when it starts to kind of... Um, it just, it had so much potential and I just want to kind of go into like where it kind of went wrong and where it maybe could have saved itself towards the end. Because overall, like most of the choices they made, like Sebastian potentially dying, um, uh, her brother potentially dying and stuff like that, that made sense to me. So we have on one spectrum of this movie, like I said, back to the future. There's a bit of cuteness, a bit of corniness, ragtag teams. Um, I could see her being like the new reinvention, like her own Michael J. Fox character um, and her own, you know, uh, her own person redefining that character. I loved it. But then it doesn't really work well when we start to introduce some really serious ideas like politics, police brutality, um, poverty, uh, expectations as a woman, as a kid, maybe from a certain background. Um, what else? There, there, death, a lot of things are coming on. On one hand, when it first started, like those serious ideas that were being brought up, I wasn't necessarily against it because I was like, okay, yeah, let's like reinvent the wheel here. Like, let's, like I said, we're, we're, if we're going to make Back to the Future, let's make it new, make it different. I was actually pretty fucking surprised how much I liked um, Jumanji, the second one. I was all against it. I was like, I fucking, no, hell no. And then I saw it and saw how they remade it and made it its own thing. And it wasn't trying to take away from the first Jumanji. And I thought, okay, I can accept that. Totally. I'm actually down for these type of remakes. And that's what it felt like it was going into that vibe of like, it was going to be its own thing. But as it, it first started coming into the serious topics mixed with the humor and that kind of weird back and forth thing. And the humor didn't necessarily like get inserted seamlessly with the drama it was very like jarring to go from back to forth from the drama to the uh more humorous moments and I realized at first I was like okay am I just is this too ahead of its time am I gonna appreciate this type of uh genre building in a couple years it, it, like you know I can't even begin to tell you how many things I've experienced that I was like so against it and I re-experienced it years later and was like oh I don't know if I was just more closed-minded at the time or I'm older so that speaks to me more but either way I was I was like kind of I was considering that is what I'm trying to say 
But then as it went on and the movie ended itself, I was like, no, this didn't fucking work. I think it should have either just been funny or just been serious. I would have been fine with either. And because it was so jarring, it made the ending even worse and weird. So let's talk about where they messed up and where they could fix it. So one, we have Eduardo. This is just a side character, but it, I, it, I loved Eduardo. I really liked him a lot. And I thought he was likable. I loved that he too was also smart and had something to offer. And, and he really did respect her for all her different personality, uh, like her more feistier personality and was okay with her. And he was very like, you know, kind of all up in her business, but not in a creepy way. He was just like very determined to get her attention. And there was even a moment when CJ was overseeing this different side of him and having an appreciation for him and his kinder side and seeing he's not just like all talk. He really has like deeper values there. And there seemed like there was something building there, something that could have been bloomed, something, whatever. And they didn't have to end up together. That was not important for me. But to sh introduce him as a character romantically, even have her have moments where she considers maybe I will potentially uh, go on a date with you, to even have her then, again, like I said, experience some sort of different side to him, and then for her to be like, you're not going to remember this by, and the character just leaves, it just kind of ended like a dud. It was like, what the, why did you even fucking introduce him? Like, I think it needed to go off with like maybe him with her something where like they didn't have to romantically get together but something where it was like together as a team some sort of compatibility it was just weird how he was like used for his machinery and then left out and I'm not saying a comment on her character for doing that but just weirdly written then we get CJ herself so one big important uh, like point about CJ that I want to point out is that they people keep pointing out to her that she's quick to anger. Now, what again, this is why I like Spike Lee and I think he actually has done um, now not the original She's All That how it ended, but he, even he has regrets with that. Um, but She's All That was amazingly written, I think, for women. I think it was beautifully written, especially modern day women. And to write for a young girl, I thought he did a great job. Because I don't feel like she came across as an angry woman, um, overheated, nothing like that. No, 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 not at all. I, I want to make that clear that when I say she was a little more feistier, I really mean just that. Like, she was a little quicker to be like, get out of my face, or like, maybe throw something on someone and be a little, you know, sneaky or whatever. But nothing to the extreme that it would be like, you know when you meet some people girls or guys, and it's like, they are fucking angry. They are quick to a fight. They're down for that shit. That really wasn't her. She was much smarter. She's quick to talk about things. You know what I'm saying? But it was, I still think what people said was valid, which was she was so quick to her emotions that she didn't stop to think about the consequences. That was the main point of this. And we saw repercussions for that. We saw one repercussion was um, she saw an ex. We see her get in a fight with him. And uh, the ex shows up. And so it's kind of like a little bit of a payback moment. She throws Slurpee on him the second time she sees him as a kind of like she got the one-ups on him instead of him being weird. By the way, that was so funny and weird. Like those are funny weird moments when he made out with his new girl in front of her and they like look over and are making eye contact with her. I thought that was so weird and funny. But they threw the Slurpee on uh, them but then that ended up causing through a chain reaction that he got a broken arm. So one, that's just pretty rough. But even she's like, okay, well, he didn't die. True, true. But like, she did feel guilty about him having a broken arm and she didn't want that. And even her friend was like, Sebastian was like, girl, like, you cannot do this shit because not only are you affecting the timeline like via like you're hurting people, but you're affecting the timeline. Like we don't know the consequences of him having a broken arm and like what's going to equal in the long term. And then in the process of her trying to save her brother, they try to save him a couple times and it doesn't work because they can't seem to get to him in time. So what they can do is stop the robbery in advance. That's what happened. The robbery happened that uh, made the confusion of who, uh, like who was, I'm so sorry, I'm just trying to think. Um, they got, the police got confused and thought these men 
were the bodega men. Keep in mind, though, I don't, I can't remember if they were the same police officers, but in this particular sect of the neighborhood, there was clearly some, like, racial tension and police aggression, and, like, they even made comments that a particular member of the community had died, and that was, like, going, that, that was, like, that, that was, like, setting the tension of the odds of what people were up against in that particular neighborhood, especially if you were black and going through that. So, like, so, it, she, she was like, okay, I gotta stop the robbery. I'm just setting the tone of, like, what the movie is like. Like I said, when I tell you about police brutality, do you think that goes, like, as, like, a fun, cutesy, humorous movie? Not really. Again, not against it. Not against if it was a whole serious movie. I'd be with a little bit of funny quips here and there. I'd be cool with that. But this is what I'm talking about when I say the genre got, like, it was just confusing. So CJ throws um, some slushies on him, uh, or her ex, and gets his arm broken. She tries to save her brother. It doesn't work initially, so she tries to go to the robbery. When she goes to the robbery, this is when Sebastian dies. And the Sebastian that's with her time traveling, because the older version of Sebastian got shot, the one in the time traveling outfit he ends up getting, spitting out blood and just fucking disappearing. So now she has her brother, which, by the way, I thought it was interesting, the consequences of different timelines. The brother was feeling weird. Like, he was feeling the after effects of, like, he shouldn't be there type of vibe. So he's feeling the after effects. He's starting to make, like, be clued in, like, something's wrong. I shouldn't be here. And her fucking friend dies. So she has to now, this is when I thought, oh, this is interesting. Is she going to have to choose between her friend or her brother? Do you see what I'm saying? It was like this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth vibe. So I was down with that idea. And that's like a great point. Like I said, goes back to the idea of like, who do you choose your friends and family? And that's not fair to choose. But Spike Lee sometimes likes to set up this idea of like, this is realistic, you got to make a fucking choice. It ain't fucking easy type vibe. And when he ended, she's got to have it again. I'm not trying to compare everything to she's got to have it because that, that was Spike Lee project specifically. And this was just a Spike Lee produced. Obviously, he's not the creative um, genius behind, behind this. But the reality is, I just need to point this out because this is uh, important. And she's got to have it when it ends the first season. There are three different partners our main character protagonist has to pick behind pick between. And I like how they ended it. It ended in a way where it was like, they're all dancing, it's kind of ambiguous, which made sense with her character who liked to be with multiple men and was having a tough time choosing. She declared her like herself and like she wanted to be with herself and be single, but it was kind of like a let's all get along type vibe. And that was a great way of ending it sort of ambiguously, but also sort of answering it. This is where the ambiguousness comes in that doesn't make sense. So she's told over and over again that her her feistiness is, I'm just going to call it that, is uh, uh, like her quick to emotions gives her um, uh, consequences. And we see the consequences of that. But after she saves her brother and she needs to go back for Sebastian, her brother eventually realizes, oh, I'm supposed to have died. Oh, time traveling is real. Blah, blah, blah. It's a thing. I'm going to help you. And when it kind of ends, she does successfully save Sebastian, but Sebastian is devastated when he hears that he had technically died. He is like fucked up from this shit. And because he's fucked up from this shit, he makes it clear he does not want to time travel with her again. He's hearing the repercussions. He was right all along. And he's like, he's basically like, I love you. You're like my sister. You're my best friend, whatever. I am not fucking doing this anymore. I am not losing you. I've lost my parents. Just a fucking reminder. I have lost my fucking parents. You've lost your dad. We're not doing this anymore. And I could even feel that would be a satisfying ending. But it ends with her basically closing the room of the garage on him and time traveling again without him. And it's left with this kind of like, oh, what's going to happen next? And that doesn't excite me because this is not Inception where it was left in this really, like there was a lot of more um, uh, importance placed on the idea between the dream and does it matter compared to real life and the consequences and when it ended with that idea of like is he in the dream is he not in the dream in inception that made complete sense again it was like a great ambiguous like damn it but also that's a great ending with this when it ends I'm like the girl has done nothing but had an unsuccessful tr time trying to save people. And I don't feel excited for her that she won't take no for an answer and wants to save both her brother and her friend. I feel like she's still making, she still hasn't evolved. She still can't make the right choice. 
And it feels un- inconclusive as a movie and as an answer to her emotional development. It, it feels like, if anything, I feel like by the end of it, you're pointing out that she doesn't have any emotional development, which sucks because I really like CJ as a character. And then um, also, we see that her brother really um, can physically feel when he's died in other timelines and it like fucks him up, like he can sense he's not supposed to be here. I'm assuming Sebastian will feel that eventually, but. I don't think she understands that if she brings her brother back, it might be like almost like, you know, remember when um, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, they bring back the Harvey's brother and he's kind of like a zombie without his soul. Like he's not supposed to be here. He's like aware he's not supposed to be here type of idea. It's like that as an idea. It's like if you do successfully get him back, I don't know if that's going to in the long term work. Again, I get it. I understand why she wants to bring her brother back. But I just felt like the script really fell flat there. So it's unfortunate because um, I think this show, or I'm sorry, this movie had a lot of great characters. I did like a lot of the jokes. I loved the interactions. I liked the possibilities. But at the very, very end, the way that it ended with everything they set up, it just fell flat. And most of all, it was really weird to go between this like humor to something really serious. I wasn't sure where I was supposed to be at in the movie. And like I said, movies can be dynamic and can be all of those things. But I think we can all agree there's a certain type of joke or humor going on still within the tone of a serious movie that has like a different, like it all kind of smoothly goes together, just as much as there's a serious tone in the middle of a sitcom that kind of all smoothly works together. And I just think they really needed to reread what they were doing because that clearly wasn't a good idea. Uh, or not good idea, but like they should have worked it out better. But anyway, so I saw See You yesterday. I'm more excited for She's Gotta Have It uh, season two. So pumped to review that because I never got to talk about the first one. So woo woo, get excited for that. It looks really fucking good. But either way, guys, let me know what you think on Twitter. Please consider um, or please consider becoming a Patreon supporter today. Do not forget to subscribe. Tell a friend because I love you in the most platonic way possible. Bye!